So it's been a long time since I last released a new video on the Temple Run prototype tutorial. So I apologize for the long delay. So I'm gonna try completing this tutorial this time without any delays hopefully. So anyways, in this video we're going to add a character selection system in our game. So the first thing that I'm going to do is open up the content browser, go to the third person, blueprints. And in here, I'm going to create a new folder called this store content. So I'm going to click on the store content and then create another folder. And this one is going to be called characters. So we're going to be storing all the characters for our character selection system in the characters folder over here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the files and create a new level. I'm going to select basic and create. Since this is going to be a character selection screen, we don't actually need a lot of stuff over here, such as volumetric clouds, we don't need it, we don't need this sky sphere, we don't need this skylight, but we do need this sky atmosphere, otherwise it's going to look really bad. Basically leave all these three alone and delete these three over here. So I'm just going to select all these three and delete it. The reason why I'm still doing that is because to kind of save a little bit of performance because we don't want a lot of performance to be taken up when we are selecting characters and mostly because it's not necessary to have all those clouds and stuff being rendered in the screen anyways. But if you want you can choose to keep them. It doesn't matter. So it's up to your choice. So now I'm going to go to the characters folder over here and then create some characters to be used for our character selection. So click on blueprint class and select actor. I'm going to call this male runner. So I'm now going to create a female runner. So again blueprint actor and then call this female runner. And then if you want you can create another one that is for cube I guess. So cube runner. So these three are going to be our characters. So I'm going to click on male runner and I'm going to move this over here add a skeletal mesh let's leave it as it is and then in here i'm going to select the sk mannequin over here as our skeletal mesh and for the animation i'm going to search for third person animation blueprint over here select it and it already adds the animation and stuff into our character compile this and now we need to do the same over to the female runner so add a skeletal mesh and in here we're going to select the SK mannequin female as our skeletal mesh and then we're going to select animation class third person animation BP and there we have so compile and save and we also want to save this level so I'm going to save the current level and again make sure this is saved in the correct folder so blueprint store content I will call this store level so this is going to be our store level where we are going to be able to select our characters and stuff. Alright I forgot in the main runner skeletal mesh drag down to collision in collision presets. You want to make sure you selected block all and we want to do the same to all the meshes over here and select block all. The reason why we are selecting this collision preset is because we want the trace responses and the object responses to be blocked and that is because we are going to be using a shape trace or a line trace to identify whether we have selected an object and to use that object name to select our character in the third person blueprint and you will understand what I mean by this later on. So now we are going to do the same for the cube runner. So I am going to add a cube, just call it as cube and then in the collision I'm just going to select block all, compile and save and that's it. And after that what I'm going to do is I'm going to select mail runner first and then I want the x axis to be at zero. And the reason why I want the x axis to be zero is because it's going to be a lot easier to move our camera from character to character when we have it starting at zero. So we're going to do the same thing this time I'm going to select this thing and then make sure it's like 200 in the x axis and for the cube runner again it's the same we're going to 
move this around 400 this time drag this up a bit and there we have our three characters over here and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add a player start i'm just going to rotate this because it's not pointing at the correct direction so i'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so it's minus 90 and then i'm also going to move the camera directly at zero in the x-axis now maybe you could just move this back by a bit so now that we have done that i'm going to create a new game mode in the store content so blueprint class and then game mode base and i'm going to call this store game mode and all i'm going to do is in the world settings over here i'm going to select the store game mode and then change the default pawn uh, so actually before i change the default pawn i need to actually create a pawn so i'm going to click on the blueprint class and select pawn and i'm going to call this blueprint camera so bp camera and this is going to be our blueprint that is going to store our camera in it so i'm going to add a camera just leave it as it is compile and then change the default pawn to bp camera so now when i play this you can see we are currently focused on the male character currently we can't move our camera but we will be adding the functionality to do that later on where we will be moving the camera from one character to the other but yeah now we have a camera setup now what we're going to do is create the ui widget so i'm going to first save everything just in case you don't want unreal to crash and lose all your progress so now i'm going to create a new widget blueprint call this store bpv open this one up and in here we're going to do the same thing that we have done in the main menu level so i'm going to add a canvas panel just drag this over here and then i preferably like to have this at 1080p so set it at 1080 and then i want a button so i'm going to add a button over here and then add a text to it so it's now parented more to the button over here and i'm just going to duplicate this so it's over here you can drag this and set it up however you want so i'm going to put them both in the same y-axis so this is going to be my left and right button and then i'm going to need an additional text so i'm going to drag another text box over here i'm going to call this character selection just drag this over here and i want this to be in the center so i'm just gonna align this at the center position basically you just position all these things however you want it i'm going to anchor this at the top and then i need another button so i'm just going to duplicate from here and this button is going to be our return button so now i'm going to name all of these buttons so first this button over here change the name to left so that's going to be the left button this one is going to be our right button make sure to change the text box as well and then this button over here will be our return button and make the text box return as well oh, actually we need another button so i'm just going to again duplicate this and again basically just align this at the center i'm going to call this the select button and there we have our select button over here and i'm going to add another text box and this one i'm going to again position it towards the center and i'm just going to leave this at question marks because this text box is going to update based on which character we are looking at again we want to create a binding for this just leave it at this we will add the logic for all of it later on and yeah with that our blueprint is ready so make sure to save it so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the level blueprint so we have our level blueprint over here from the begin event play i'm going to drag and then search for create widget and from here i'm going to select the class as store blueprint widget and from that i'm going to drag the return value and type add to viewport 
and from here I'm going to right click and type get player controller drag and set the input type to game only drag this connection over here and then we're going to once again drag the return value from the player controller and then type set show mouse cursor and set it to true it's basically the same thing that we have done for the main menu level blueprint compile and if you want you can save it and now i'm going to just run it over here and there we have it our ui is visible over here right now the buttons doesn't do anything and the ui isn't properly positioned it's kind of all over the place so i'm going to go and open the stored blueprint widget over here and then once again adjust the position of all these buttons so if you're facing issues with your ui where it's not properly appearing make sure that the anchoring for each of these buttons over here not the text box the button that you can identify in the hierarchy over here and the button must be properly anchored which you can set the anchoring over here under slot anchors then click on this drop down and choose where you want to anchor the button and again you can see where it's currently anchored by looking at this little icon over here so for each button it's different based on where i want the button to appear that was the reason why previously when i set up the buttons it wasn't looking proper the buttons were kind of misaligned even though it looked proper over here so again something to keep in mind while using this now if we were to run this so everything looks proper now there is still a lot to do for our character selection system but since this video is already over 10 minutes long i'll continue the rest of this in the next part of this tutorial and also because editing shorter videos is a lot easier for me thanks for watching and see you later bye